And uh, somebody asked me once, they said, do you have a special anointing for getting people filled with the Holy Spirit? And I said, I think the answer to that is no, I don't. That's because I think if I had a special anointing, I probably would see like 90% of people filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I've, I've had some big nights. I've probably had a dozen nights where I've seen at least 100 people filled with the Holy Spirit in the service that I preached. The high that I'm aware of was over 300 one night in the Philippines where they, they actually counted them. You know, first time in your life that you ever spoke in tongues. It was over 300 that night. And I've had at least a dozen nights or more than 100. But I tell people, I don't think I have an anointing. I give altar calls. That is, I simply give people an opportunity to connect with the Lord. See, I believe that Jesus wants to save people. So I give an opportunity. I believe that Jesus wants to meet the needs of people. So I give an opportunity for them to get healed. Why? Because I think he wants to heal them. I believe that Jesus wants to fill people with the Holy Spirit. I believe he wants to do that every single week. And so we just want to provide opportunity where people can receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And when that, when you start giving people an opportunity to receive, people will start receiving. I've often said to people, I can tell you how to have a healing ministry. Do I have a healing ministry? I know a lot of people say, man, I want a healing ministry. And I've got books on my research table on how to heal the sick and all that stuff. But I can, I can simplify it down to one statement, okay? I can cut through all of the material, all of the DVDs, all of the cassettes. I can tell how to have a healing ministry in one statement. Are you ready? Pray for the sick. That's it. You pray for the sick. Now, obviously, you want to learn how do I do it better, more effectively. You start praying for the sick, people are going to start getting healed. You want to see people baptized in the Holy Spirit? Give invitations. Start praying for them to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And as you start doing that, there will be people who will start receiving the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because Jesus is the baptizer. So that's point number one, by the way, on, on baptism, praying for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And it's so important that you understand this. You can't baptize anybody in the Holy Spirit. Neither can I. Trust me. I've tried. <laughs> you can't baptize anybody in the Holy Spirit. Um, but what an incredible privilege we get to pray with people who want to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. So I want to share with you some things I often share at an altar. And these are things that you can share with people who you're praying for the baptism in the Holy Spirit at an altar. And things that you can share with them, whether you do it publicly, whether you do it one-on-one. But I always want people to know Jesus is the baptizer. I'm not. I mean, he he really, he, he, he drilled that home to me on the night that I was so cocky I'd given this invitation for people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, 12 people standing at the altar. And I said to myself, I didn't say this out loud, but to myself I was thinking, it's a good thing I'm here. Because I can get these people filled with the Holy Spirit. I have the formula. And he said, go ahead. <laughs> Let's see what you can do. 12 people later, nobody having received anything Empty hands being laid upon their heads. My son said empty heads too, but uh, I got to the end of the line and I am praying for a heart attack. I am praying for the earth to open up and swallow me. If I could go home in a blaze of glory, you know, I'm, I'm. Holy Spirit said to me, Well, now we have seen what you can do. Would you like to see what I can do? And I said, please. <laughs> and that's how I said it, please. And in the next few moments, with nobody touching anybody, I think every one of them began speaking in other tongues. None of them have a clue that had nothing to do with their faith that night. It had to do with God saying, I've got to show that boy a lesson because he's in big trouble. So Jesus is the baptizer, okay? Then I want them to know this. You're going to ask in faith for this gift. It is a gift. You never 
earn gifts. You receive gifts. You earn wages. You receive gifts. The Holy Spirit's not given because you're good enough. He's given because you're not. You see, early Pentecostal believers not only believed that the baptism of the Holy Spirit empowered them to witness, they also believed He empowered them to live clean lives. And they recognized without Him, they couldn't do it. And so the Holy Spirit's not given as a merit badge for those who've earned Him. The baptism is a tool to help us in our working for Him and living for Him. So I'll say to them, this is a gift. You're not, you know, you're not going to be able to earn it. Just It's a gift. You're going to receive this gift. You're going to receive it by faith. You're going to believe that when you ask Him, He's going to give this to you. The third thing I often say to people is I want them to worship. That there's something about the atmosphere of worship that makes it easier to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now, you can do it otherwise. Again, these, these are not a hard you know, set of thou shalt do these eight, nine, ten things. It's just some observations. It's easier for people to receive the Holy Spirit baptism during, if, they're, if they're worshiping. So I often say to people, for the next few moments, let's just worship. Get our minds off of ourselves, onto the Lord. The fourth thing, I will always say this to people, you cannot speak in two languages at the same time. Now, I'm focusing on the tongues here. And by the way, it's important that we understand this. The baptism in the Holy Spirit is more than speaking in tongues. Just like your house is more than the door. Aren't you glad your house has more than a door to it? <laughs> you know? But your house does have a door. You couldn't get in without the door. The door lets you in, right? The, the tongues is the door. It's the entryway. You come into the baptism of the Holy Spirit through this process of speaking in other tongues. That's, that's the initial, that is first, physical evidence. Right out of our doctrinal statement. It's not the only evidence. It's the first evidence. And it's the first physical evidence. There's other evidences that will follow. Love. Romans 5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And there's a number of other things that come along in our lives after that we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But we talk about tongues because often tongues is the point of struggle for people. And so I'll say to them, you can't speak in two languages at the same time. Now, I'm headed off to Germany uh, in two days, and I don't speak any German other than donkey, uh, donkey, 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 That's my rough German for thank you. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's it, man. That's everything I know. And I can't say Dankeschön and thank you at the same time. It's one or the other. I can't speak in German and English at the same time. You can't speak in tongues and your native language at the same time. So it's going to be one or the other that you're going to speak at some point that you're receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I will say to people this. You, you learn to yield yourself to the Lord. In fact, probably the essence of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is this thing of letting go, yielding yourself to the Lord. And I often illustrate it with, with, with floating in water. Now, I am not a very good swimmer, okay? I swim enough to stay afloat, you know, in the swimming pool so I don't drown. But, but I do the dead man's float pretty good. You know, that's the one where you take a deep breath and just lay face down in the water like this. The secret to floating, other than getting a good breath, is letting go. It's yielding your body to the water. As soon as you begin to fight the water, you go down. You drown. Many people coming to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit spend the entire time fighting the Holy Spirit. They're struggling to receive. You don't receive by struggle. You receive by surrender. You see, you're not, it's not, you're not working this thing up. Here's something you don't have to say, by the way, to people. I'm jumping ahead of myself, but it's okay. You know, we used to say this as a kid. Just say, glory, 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 until your tank gets tangled and your birds get wixed. That's not the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That's tangled tongues, tongues and mixed up words, okay? You know, you know, that, you're not struggling to receive. You receive by surrender. You are yielding yourself 
to the one who wants. Now, by the way, the Lord did baptize some of those people in spite of us. You know, he, I'll get to that again in a moment. Number six, God provides the language. You provide the vehicle. And that means two things. One, you don't tell them what to say. Okay? Don't say to them, repeat after me, yabba dabba do. You know, <laughs> a little dab will do. You know, you don't do that. I was in this youth camp, man, where they, this kid's going around praying for people, having great success, getting people prayed through to the Holy Spirit. You see him pray, shout of joy would go up. Another one, I got curious. I thought this was cool, it's wonderful. I, I would have got listening. He's telling them, now repeat after me. She'll be coming around the mountain. You know, I mean, <laughs> who stole my Honda? You know, that sort of stuff. It's like, don't do that. You don't have to tell them what to say. He provides the language. But you provide the vehicle for the language to be given. God gives the language, but he doesn't do the speaking. Here's what the scripture says. They were filled. They spoke. Didn't say God spoke. They spoke. I just want it to be God, brother. It will be. Who else is going to speak? You know, it's not God. Well, I'll say this. I don't want it to be me. I'll say, well, you know, it's going to be you. It's going to be your voice. <laughs> you know, God's not going to give you my voice. Thank God, you know. And he's not going to come down and, you know, take the vocal cord. No, it's going to be your voice, your lips, just not your words. You cooperate. You yield yourself to him. Galatians says you receive the Spirit by faith. Now, you choose to speak. He gives the words you choose to let those words come. Now, here is four physiological things I have noticed that nearly always take place. One of these four things will take place before you begin to speak in tongues. I'll guarantee it. Number one, some people hear a st feel a stirring within their belly. John chapter 7, 37 through 39, out of their belly shall flow rivers of living water. This he spoke of the Spirit. When you got saved, where did the Holy Spirit come into? Where did Jesus move into? Inside of you, in your spirit, in your belly, your inner person. When you got saved, the Holy Spirit moved inside of you too. Not just Jesus, the Holy Spirit moved inside of you too. When you get filled with the Spirit, the release comes from where He lives. Where does He live? Inside. That's why for most people, probably three out of five, they feel something right here. And I say to them, if that happens to you, don't be afraid. That's the Holy Spirit. What you're going to do is allow the feeling to rise. And when the feeling gets to your lips, you open your mouth and you let it out. Now, here's the miracle. The feeling becomes a language at the lips. I don't do that. He does that. But you can't speak in any language with your mouth shut. Try it. Unless you're a ventriloquist. You know, you get, you get open your mouth. Now, some people don't feel anything in their spirit. What happens to them is they hear a word or a phrase in their head. Jesus said, and Jesus is the baptized. He said, I speak what I hear my Father say. So when you ask the Lord to fit the Holy Spirit, you're praying with somebody for them to receive the Holy Spirit. You may let them know that they may start hearing words in their head that are not their native language. If that happens, by faith, they're going to open their mouth and just say what Jesus is giving them. This happened to both of my sons. They begin to hear words. Now, the faith that comes in is as you open your mouth to say it. And often it may start with just a word or two or three. But I say to people, if you go ahead and give that back to the Lord, he turns that into a river. The Mississippi River, which is the largest, strongest river in North America, in Minnesota, at the headwaters, you can step over it. Don't try that in New Orleans. Right just before the Gulf of Mexico, it's, it's, a, it's a mile wide there. But it's water in both places. And whether you're speaking with a few syllables or it's a gusher coming out of you, it's still the Holy Spirit. 
It will grow. The third thing that some people feel is this. They start feeling, or they start having Isaiah 20 to 11, stammering lips. They're trying to speak in their own language, and it's not happening. And, and so it's like they're between their language and tongues. And I always say to people, if that happens, quit trying to speak your language. Because here's what's happening in nearly every case. The Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, is trying to fill them. They're trying to speak in their language, and so they're getting neither one. So I say to them, if you find you're having a hard time controlling your lips and you're stuttering and stammering, quit trying to form the words with your brain. Allow them to come from here. Now, don't ever do this, Reagan. But I've been tempted when they're stammering to reach over and slap them. (laughs) Also spit on them too, but... (laughs) I was tempted to slap and just figuring the shock, you know, that would cause him to let go. But don't do that. And so far, I have never done that. Here's the fourth thing that will happen. Nothing. This is what happened to me. I didn't feel a thing here. Nothing. I don't ever remember hearing anything here. And I don't ever remember stammering. But the night that I received the baptism and picked this up, My attention was turned for the first time, not to the gift, but to the giver. My focus was on Jesus, not speaking in tongues. And I didn't even realize I'd started speaking in tongues until I heard old brother Bishop say, well, thank God he received. And I realized that was me speaking in tongues. I had made a transition And I can tell when somebody's seeking the tongues or seeking Jesus by their response at an altar if they haven't received. If they haven't received yet and they were just seeking the tongues, they'll go away so frustrated. But if they've been seeking Jesus, I've watched them go away encouraged. Even though they hadn't spoken tongues yet, but they were in the presence of Jesus. And so I want them to speak in tongues, but I want them to know I want them to have more than the tongues. I want them baptized in the spirit. Let me give you these other three or four things real quick and then we're done. Actually, two more things. Some things that are not important. Posture. Totally unimportant. I don't care if they're standing, sitting, standing on their head. It's irrelevant. You don't have to push them. You can receive whispering. It's easier out loud. It is. It's easier out loud. That's just experience. But you can receive that. That's why I always tell people to pray. I encourage people to pray loud enough that their ears hear their lips for two reasons. I want them to hear themselves speak in tongues. It's also easier for us who are working with them. You have to put your ear up against their nose that way. You know, to see if they're speaking anything, you actually hear them. But it's just easier. Um, you don't have to massage the seeker <laughs> or pound the speaker. You don't have to yell in their ears. Uh, And don't tell them what to say. I think some people, God filled them with the Spirit in order to protect them because we're about to kill them. You know, you've been been in the meetings. I've been in meetings with youth cancer space. They're pounding, oh, Jesus, fill them, fill them, fill them. You know, it's like, do something, God, because he's going to kill that kid, you know. You don't have to do that. You don't have to pound. You don't have to shake them. You have to scream in their ear. I've seen them do this on one side. Send the fire, God. Send the other ear. Send the rain, Lord. Send the rain. I mean, you know, just ask the Lord to fill them with the Holy Spirit. Lay your hands on them. You don't have to do that, but it's frequent in the Scripture. And then once the Lord has filled them. And by the way, you may have to encourage them. When they first start speaking in tongues, they'll be hesitant. Because they're going to think, is that me? And I said, go ahead. Yeah, that's right. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. And when they start speaking tongues, that's right. Don't, don't go back to the other. You know, just keep speaking that other language until they begin to flow. And then often I'll ask them afterwards, what happened to you? And again, some people know instantly, this is what happened. I can fill with the Spirit. Some don't know. And they'll look at you, well, I, and if they're, I'll say, well, let me ask you a question. Because I'm not going to tell people that they received the baptism of the but I want them to tell me. But I'm asking this. Did you hear yourself speaking in a language you didn't know? Uh-huh. 
Well, where'd you think that came from? God? Yeah, I think so. Really? Came from God? Confidence starts building inside of them. Because you see, they don't know. You see, we, we tell the stories of these wonderful encounters of people that they, they get hit by God and they can't speak in English till the next day. I've got those stories, okay? I can tell you the stories. I can tell you the story of the girl who got filled with the Spirit and, and she can't speak in English and she wants to know where the toilet's at. And she's trying to ask and she can't. It was funny. <laughs> but that doesn't happen to most people. Okay, that's not most people's encounters. A lot of people didn't feel a thing. But a language began to come. And the feelings came later. And the power was increased in their lives. So I, want, I take the pressure off them. And I help explain to them what's happening, what's taking place. But I don't tell them they got filled until they tell me. You know, I'm I, I, yeah, I heard myself saying something I didn't understand. What, do you think maybe it was tongues? Yeah, maybe. Where do you think it came from? I said, did it come out of your mind? No, it came from down here. What do you think? Maybe, think maybe that's God? Yeah, maybe. Okay? And, and, uh, and then I always tell them this. I always tell them this. I want you to start praying in tongues every day of your life from now on. I said, now, I said, now please understand this. I said, listen, you will probably have the devil say this to you. That's just you making those words up. You see, for three years after I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, every time I spoke in tongues, the devil said, that's just you making the words up. Okay? And so I, I just like to expose his lie right now. So I say to people, every time you pray, the devil's probably going to, and when he tells you that, here's two responses to give to him. Number one, I didn't ask you for this. I asked my heavenly father and Luke eleven thirteen is his guaranteed promise. Okay? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more? Does your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? Second response, if you didn't like to hear me speak in tongues before, listen now. <laughs> and pray in tongues. Why don't you stand with me? You've been fun to talk to. Some of you maybe have not been filled with the Holy Spirit yet. And you know, it doesn't have to take us to midnight. But you know, there's no reason why you cannot receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now, right where you're standing. I've watched the Lord fill people with the Holy Spirit while I was preaching. I've seen, I've seen the Holy Spirit fill people, you know, in just uh, all these in, just incredible situations, just sitting in a room after a service, you know, n- no music playing. Just they opened up to the Lord and He filled them. Because he wants you to be filled. Because he knows it will make a huge difference in your ministering to people at an altar when you're filled with the Spirit. So if you haven't been filled yet, it would be a wonderful opportunity for you to receive tonight. And we're going to just do this kind of gentle prayer in a moment and ask the Lord to fill you. And right where you're standing, you can just lift your hands and hearts to the Lord and receive a filling. And then I want to pray for God to just release an anointing into your life as you serve on the altar, and as you're ministering to people, and what an incredible privilege. As I said early on, God may let his anointing flow through you. Let me tell you, that is an incredible feel when God says, I'm going to anoint you, and you're going to touch this person. I'm going to do something really cool in their life. Wow. Father, just before pastor comes, and, and Lord, I'm going to and we're going to pray for people in a moment, Lord, as, as Pastor feels and as the people desire. But I just want to thank you for these friends, Lord, who've, who've committed, Lord, this evening and they're committing their lives to say, Lord, we want to be available to serve you, to serve your kingdom by praying for people with needs, by joining together at the altar and lifting them before you, Father, and believing you to heal and to, and to salvage and to restore and, and to minister to the brokenhearted. You said, Lord, in Luke 4, that you were anointed to set captives free and to heal the sick and to declare the gospel. And I thank you, Lord, that you're still anointed for that and your anointing will be upon us to do those things. Specifically, Father, I pray that this church 
Father, in addition to being known as a place where people come to know Jesus as Savior, and also be known as a place where people find Jesus as baptizer. May it just be the normal course of life in this church. They get saved and they get filled with the Holy Spirit and wonderful things happen in their lives. I pray, Father, for anyone in this meeting tonight, may they not be uncomfortable, Lord. May they just be very comfortable knowing that, uh, Lord, they're not second class, they're first class. But, Lord, as we lift our hearts before you, would you graciously fill them with your Spirit? And, Father, time may not permit us to lay hands on everybody, but I just ask right now that you would extend your hand toward them. Now, let's just take a moment. Why don't we, before Pastor comes, to just lift our hearts to say thanks to the Lord. And if you haven't been filled with the Spirit, you can just begin to receive Him right now. Father, I stir up the Spirit of the Lord that is within every one of my brothers and my sisters. Father, your Spirit resides within them. Your Spirit lives within them. They have just as much of your Spirit in them as I have in me. Your Spirit lives within them. And Father, I am asking, first of all, for those who have not been released in the fullness of this baptism in the Spirit, uh, that even tonight, Lord, that there will be an incredible release uh, of the power of the Holy Spirit into their lives, uh, and they will be filled with your Holy Spirit. And then, Father, I pray that out of these friends, Lord, that there will come an anointing of your Holy Spirit, Lord, at the altars of this church, the people will find a difference in their lives because these friends have laid hands on them, have prayed with them, have believed God with them, and wonderful things have taken place because of that. And now, Lord, I think of that passage in John's Gospel. It said, you breathed on them and they received the Holy Spirit. So, Father, I'm asking you to breathe. Just breathe upon this room right now, Holy Spirit. Just breathe upon this room right now. Just ask you to do that, Holy Spirit. Just breathe on this room. Just let him breathe on you right now, friend. Just let his breath breathe upon you. Just let his breath breathe upon you right now. Yeah, right there. I stir up that anointing of the Holy Spirit that's in you. In fact, right now, some of you just put your hands on your belly. Just put your hands on your own belly right now. The Bible doesn't say who has to lay hands on you. Just lay hands on yourself. And in the name of Jesus, I stir up. As you lay hands on yourself, in the name of Jesus, I stir up the anointing that is in you. In the name of Jesus, I stir up, sis, the anointing that is in you. I stir up the anointing that is in you. I release the anointing that's in you. I release the gift of the Holy Spirit that's in you. Brother, in the name of Jesus, I stir up the Spirit that's in you and the anointing that's in you to flow through you to others. In Jesus' name. Lay hand on yourself and receive Him now. Hey, I read the book, she can't, da 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 da